the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God the glory of transformation part 3 yeah. hallelujah the man of God says be not conformed to this world that is a great instruction that is given by the Holy Spirit to us say so Lord Jesus open my heart to your word <laughs> open my ear to hear your word open my eye to see your word open my heart to understand your word <laughs> amen so there are some things that need to be defined for people to understand them properly and one of them is Christianity glory be to God Christianity is a spiritual responsibility to reflect the image of Christ on the earth realm so when you say I am a Christian it means you have accepted to become a reflection of God on, of Christ on earth which means that when we look at you we're supposed to see Christ are you following me child of God so at any time your character does not reflect Christ it means you have gone out of the aspect of Christianity are you a child of God now with this understanding and answer this to you the strength of your can I say strength the veracity of your Christianity is not measured by the abundance of your material possessions but by the godliness of your character you don't say ah since I came to church eh? ah my business is booming yes that's good what's about your character you can't be in church and be in Christ and you are still a slave to anger you are still a slave to pride you are still a slave to fear you are still a slave to immorality it is a sign that your Christianity is not advancing so but when people make mistakes they use a wrong indice to measure their faith they begin to measure their faith by the things they have no your Christianity must be measured by the godliness of your character how Christ like am I in my character child of God and this is why we have many people who have gone astray because they measure their faith in God by the things they have no listen to me when you walk with God the emphasis of the Holy Spirit is not what you are having but who you are becoming he wants to see so the Holy Ghost is saying for example come brother like you are dressed with your garment so this is the Holy Spirit when I meet the Holy Spirit and we are walking together he is not checking what I have in my hand he begins to check when Kevin met me he had anger after working with me one year he does no longer have anger this is what the Holy Ghost check but if after working with him the Holy Ghost is saying that Kevin is still the same way he was when he met me it means I'm not advancing in my spiritual life thank you so you must understand that this is so god begins to emphasize much more on what you are becoming this is why today we are having a wrong concept about church church is not a breakthrough center church is not a solution center church is a heavenly ordained institution for men to be impacted with the character of christ they can teach you to have money everywhere 
they can teach you about how to have a good marriage it is only in church we teach you to be holy so even if I come and teach you seven keys of prosperity it is nice but that is not the, ma the major function of the church is to be an institution where men can become like Christ where, so when you come to church you must ask yourself am I changing am I becoming better am I becoming more forgiving more loving are you following me child of God so it says be not conformed to this world why you are not a Christian you are not born from above the greatest mistake people make is to think that Christianity is a means to have things Christianity is not a means to possess the things of this world no 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 if that is your own Christianity you are not yet a child of God church is not a business well, you need money you now come man of God I've called my seed you, so, you give seed 1 million God give you 10 million you are doing business with God it doesn't happen if you are giving a seed it's an expression of your faith and your love for God Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19 it says if only in this world have we hope in Christ we are pitiable in other words ah, yeah, 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 yeah. if your Christianity is only limited to possessing the things of this world you have no identity in the realm of the spirit if all about your life today people that vex leave church why say since they join church they never married no they say they give man from for church for church would they give you now holiness now i walk that you vex say you do not pay your house rent no to say they pay house rent for church if they pay your house rent glory be to god they don't pay and glory be to jesus but what you should be angry is if you are in a church and they don't teach you to become like God. Leave it, leave it very fast. That's not a church. That's a business center. If it is church, it must be a place where every time you come there, you know more about God so you can become more like God. So it's not a means to be having things. It's a means to become like God. So Paul says, be not conformed to this world in john 3 verse 3 jesus said unless a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god in verse 5 he said unless a man be born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god did he say unless a man be born again he cannot marry is that what he said unless a man be born again he cannot have money is that what he said he explained very well that this matter of born again it is an initiation into God's kingdom. So being born again is a divine strategy to usher men into the reality of the kingdom of God. So you cannot be a, a Christian and all you think about is money. Ah, if you know what is in this kingdom, the advantage you have, the kind of grace that is given to us, we don't complain. No. No. We are not stranded. No. Because we are born from above. And he that is born from above is above all. Not above some. Above all. So every Adaba, he that is born of God is ordained in a realm far beyond the, the powers of this world. What are you afraid of? It's because you don't know what it means to be a child of God. He that is born of God is like the wing. But the issue is this. Let me say this to you. You may say, but man of God, how come uh, I am a Christian, but uh, I'm still poor? I am a Christian, I'm sick, I'm a Christian, and there is a curse. Yes. Romans 8 verse 1 says, Now there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk after the flesh. Oh, you see now. So the issue is not just being a Christian. It's walking in the spirit. Walking by faith. Are you understanding me, child of God? So you must understand, therefore, that the devil has no power over a Christian who walks in righteousness before God. Satan cannot touch you. 
if satan can touch you it means there is something in you that belongs to him jesus said the prince of this world satan is coming for me but he has nothing in me when satan is coming for you he will check if you have anger if you have pride if you have loss and those things become what will attract him to you and open the door for him to touch you that's why i explained to you that prayer was not given to men to conquer their enemies it was given to conquer the weaknesses of the flesh because the bible says in genesis 3 verse 14 god said to the serpent i've explained it many times and i keep saying it all the time you will eat dust and god said to adam in verse 19 dust you are so god gave the flesh god gave the flesh as food for the serpent so every time you walk in the flesh you present yourself as food for the serpent satan cannot touch you when you are holy hear it today and hear it where there is no possibility there is no charm there is no witchcraft there is no arrow no weapon god punish them nothing they can do if at all it work don't check the devil check your heart if at all they came and press you in your dream something's wrong with your heart if at all they came and slept with you they gave you food they oppress you stop checking your the altar check your hands might be there is something that you have not handled and it has become an open door for the devil to enter the bible says do not sleep over your anger and give the devil no foothold so they are setting character traits that can open the door for evil to enter our life so he now says be not conformed to the well why because when you are born of the flesh you are structured to behave like the were. listen to me you don't need to teach any child how to lie who teaches them how to lie they grow with it child of God lift your hand and say father in the name of Jesus I ask for your mercy. Enable me to walk in holiness. This world is full of temptation. But the Bible says in Proverbs 1 verse 10, it says, my son, if sinners entice you, don't accept. Stop saying that they force me. Nobody force you. Bring it up. If sinners entice you, do not consent. So it is impossible to sin without your acceptance and agreement. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Give me NLT. If sinners tempt you, turn your back on them. That's what it says. Turn your back on the well. Refuse to be like them. Stand your ground and represent the kingdom you are born into and born from. Glory be to God. If sinners entice thee, consent not. They will entice you with the things of the world they will present sin as something which is good nowadays we live in a dangerous time people of God where sin has been presented as a good thing in the eyes of the world dressing naked is not normal until people say I don't find anything wrong you don't find anything wrong because your heart has been corrupted it is wrong things which ought not to be because we don't understand as a church that the major agenda of Satan is not to stop the church but to corrupt her with iniquity from within. Satan cannot stop the church so he wants to corrupt the church. So when the church begins to behave like the world so things that happen in the world begin to happen in the church there is a problem. You must understand and you must stand your ground. There are certain character traits that must die in your life. Anger must die by fire. Pride must die. Amen. Lust must die. Amen. Bitterness must die. Amen. Jealousy must die. Amen. Envy must die. Amen. Leave your enemies and handle your anger. Moses killed all his enemies and anger killed him. It is important you face your weakness. Do not be conformed to the world. So he says, be not conformed to the world, right? If I should not be conformed to the world, who should I be conformed to? Christ. The word conform means be like. I explained to you. Romans 8 verse 29. He says, 
be as many as he for you he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so every christian god says don't be like the world be like christ the things these things i'm saying and preaching every day they are not making sense to you one day you will regret that you do not listen to me i am crying this out as a prophet be careful beware of the way you live beware of the way you walk you may think what's that boy just shouting there a time will come you will know that i spoke from yahweh elohim you will know that the spirit of god possessed me and every word i spoke was spirit and life a time will come and you will know that whatever i spoke to you i didn't speak by myself but i spoke by he that sent me things are changing in the spirit darkness is moving to take over this entire realm and you can't be in church and your leg is outside you will die it's not a prophecy it's a reality you will die they will catch you first and kill you fast because they don't want to give you time to repent this is time to so, to strengthen and stabilize yourself in christ my son if sinners entice you consent not if your friends outside want to introduce you to a life that does not glorify god don't accept it remember what i have preached to you when they invite you for their party and you go to the party and you see them leave the place my son my daughter if sinners entice you consent not accept not agree not no matter the pressure of the temptation if you rely on grace you'll be strengthened to move out of it there is no temptation you can overcome if you depend on his grace whether it is fornication whether it is pride no temptation is beyond the ability of god's grace to lift a man out my son my daughter if sinners entice you consent Are you with me child of god so god says be like christ sometimes please forgive me please forgive me but sometimes i feel pain when i look at some of you i am in pain after all these years you can't still forgive it is a shame it is a shame that after all these years with walking under the grace of a prophet whose major cry is holiness and you cannot still be sexually pure my god something which i cry out day and night even if you are captured won't you come to me to pray for you and help you if i was living like that where would we be today not because by my flesh i have the strength i have relied on his grace so i can this thing is not an option we must be righteous we must be holy we must walk in love we must forgive we must we must be conformed to christ what you did not see christ do don't do it the way christ did not behave don't behave so and be conformed to the image of christ you think you are smart you think nobody is seeing you light will disgrace you one day listen to what i'm telling you i didn't say life i say light that thing you think you are doing it is hiding they are not seeing it because you come to church i don't prophesy it i'm telling you today it's a prophecy the light of god will one day expose and disgrace you repent 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 don't take it don't never take god's mercy for granted that you are doing things and you come around the man of god and he does not see be careful the light of god will disgrace you don't live a life which is hypocritical both in public and in private your life must give glory to abba father be careful be careful be careful be careful your destiny is calling for you if you are living the way you are living you will not succeed in life if you continue on this path of iniquity maybe you think it is a secret life there is nothing hidden that will not be exposed be careful oh listen to my voice now and turn back turn back now i don't know what you are planning to do but don't do it
listen to the voice of God I don't know what you are planning to enter into listen to this voice of prophecy don't do it I don't know the agenda you are planning to have after this service don't do it God knows whom he's talking to and the person to whom God is talking to knows themselves be conformed to the image of Christ be like Christ in character there are times I sit back and I'm praying and I look at myself and I cry I say Lord I want to love like you I want to be like you one time somebody spoke something against me which was a lie and I got angry and I said something when I went to pray the Holy Ghost began to chastise me and I felt so bad the person lied against me I got angry and I said something and when I came it is easy me that God was disciplining not the person God said he said they can behave the way they like but you you are my son don't behave like that <laughs> that is when I knew that this thing is not a joke they can insult me but I cannot insult them because I am a son of God it might be painful but that is where the glory of God is in the life of a Christian. When he can withhold himself from reacting to offense by the flesh, then he sees the glory of God. I don't know what has captured you. Today, there is grace. Come out from it. Whatever you are doing in the secret, with your phone, with your television, what are you, you are not hiding. Repent. Repent. Whatever you are doing in your marriage you think your wife does not know your husband does not know <laughs> listen to me very well this is the voice of Yahweh Elohim repent repent I say again repent change today is an open door an opportunity for somebody to say no I am turning away from a life that is listen to me Bible says God cannot be mocked. That, that's a very frightful scripture. God cannot be mocked. It means prophet Kevin can be mocked. <laughs> so you can be near me and you mock me. Your husband can be mocked. As a wife, you can be so your husband does not know. Be mocking him. Your wife can be mocked. You can be writing to girls on your phone that you delete them no matter one day you will forget to delete she will see it one day this is the day is coming notice that one day no matter how you are a master of deleted one day it shall not be deleted repent now repent now so human beings can be mocked he said but god cannot be mocked there is no possibility god says i will give unto you according to what you have sown I have too much of a burden for your life and I want to see you rise and become great men and women but the truth is this as a pastor if I weaken my hand because I'm afraid not to discipline you all of you will end up as failures if I am afraid of your face not to rebuke you you will end up as a shame so forgive me if you are my child I will talk to you like this it is my responsibility it is my responsibility I will not sit down and watch you cheat on your wife I, it doesn't matter what you tell me I will not agree I will not sit down and watch you become a thief or a scammer or a liar or a prostitute or a drug dealer or, or, or whatever listen to me not in this church you won't stand with me I will never accept it God brought you to me I have responsibility for your soul and by every equipment I have spiritually I must hold you not to go astray whether you like it or not this is Kevin, this is who I am as I'm talking to you, there's no other me spirit. this is my nature, this is my truth if I don't hold you strong, Satan will take you away so forgive me if I talk like this it's because the time is urgent we need to bring back holiness into our lifestyle as we are Christians be conformed to the image of Christ so you can be like him now the Bible says be not conformed <laughs> it says be not conformed to the world but be transformed by what? 
by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove bring it up romans 12 2 what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god are you see something here so yeah yeah and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god so we understand from this scripture that it is impossible to experience the fulfillment of the will of god if we are conformed to the world the reason why God's will is not coming to pass in your life is because you are not carrying the image of Christ. Oh. Man, the key the The Holy Spirit is here. Thy kingdom come in my life thy will be done in my life thy kingdom come in my life thy will be done in my life thy kingdom come before thy will be done thy kingdom come is the culture of God it makes you understand that the will of God is the seed but the kingdom of God is the womb without a womb there can't be a child so he says for the will of God to find expression in your life, the culture of a heaven must be present first. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He said, when you are transformed, listen to me, it is God's will for you to marry. It is the will of God for you to travel abroad. It is the will of God for you to be blessed. But the issue is this, his will is being hindered, not by Satan, but by your unwillingness to surrender to his authority. The truth is this <laughs> if the devil attacks you prophet kevin is anointed to deliver you but if you give yourself into sin unless you repent you can't be helped the matter is beyond my hand i'm not afraid of satan here i don't sleep saying they can't kill you they, they will pass away i don't get that kind of fear them those things are not in my heart but what I am afraid is that you should not cheat on your wife. Because when you do that, you are putting yourself in a place where Satan will touch you easily and I will not be able to help you well unless you repent. What I am afraid is that you should not stay in unforgiveness. Is that you should not stay in bitterness. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So the kingdom of God is the spiritual atmosphere that sustains the fulfillment of the will of God. Thy kingdom come first kingdom means culture when the culture of god reigns in your life his will finds fulfillment in your life so what god wants to happen to you will never happen unless and if the kingdom has come first thy kingdom come first in my life thy will be done in my life thy kingdom come in my life Thy will be done. That's what I've been, the whole night I've been meditating upon. Lord, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. There are certain blessings that are attracted to you when your character is conformed to Christ. There are things you won't pray for. It says, when a man's way please the Lord, he make him be at peace with his enemy. Abba, Abba. <laughs> when a man's way please the Lord, he make him be at peace with his enemy. It means even your enemy cannot de- can. Your enemy just say when I leave you, do in a man's way, please the Lord. And thou shalt bless the righteous. Psalm 5 verse 12. And with favor will you surround him as a shield. Barakabata. Oh God, give me favor. Oh God does not bless unrighteous people. If you must be blessed, you must operate under the, the righteousness of Christ. What you must understand is this. Number one we are born to do the will of god <laughs> psalms 40 verse 8 he said here i am i have come to do your will you did not come on earth to do your will you came to do his will until you grow to have this understanding you will never mature in the things of the spirit number one we are born the, you, you, the reason why you are here is to do the will of god and listen this is the issue is this when your desire is to do the will of God you attract his grace upon your life when God
God sees in your heart that what you want is to do his will he just begins to bless you because God knows that this one his agenda is with my own do you know that the major reason why prayer are not answered is not because the prayer point is wrong it's because the motive is wrong so he's praying to have money but when God looks at his heart he wants to have money so he wants to live a kind of life God says oh, your motive is not right James 4 3 he said you ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motive your prayer is right but your motive is wrong are you with me child of God listen to me there is nothing God can withhold from a person who wants to do his will nothing because what God wants is for his will to be done so when God looks at you you know there are people who tell me that the dream that I died. I say, where well, that's your dream. You, are, you, you have right to dream what you want to dream. I can't die now. I don't pray against death. All I need to do is to make sure I'm in the will of God. My protection is his responsibility. You start praying those prayer points where you go out of track. When you are in his will. Mandavina Sabalika. Your, your, your provision, protection, and preservation becomes the responsibility of God. He, he says, I will number two it is the fulfillment of the will of God that brings a Christian honor and glory John 4 34 Jesus said my meat is to do the will of my father it is the fulfillment of the will of God that brings a Christian honor and glory in other words when the will of god is not fulfilled a christian cannot have honor and glory lift your hands say lord in the name of jesus help me to do your will number three see this show me hebrews 13 21 god equips us to do his will hebrews 13 21 god equips us to do his will God make you complete in every good work to do his will. Ah, yeah, yeah. In what, working in you, what is well pleasing in his sight. Look here. He says, God does what? Make you, make you, when I read them, make you, to do what? Stop. Will he give you money? Of course. Make you complete. If you are healthy and you are poor, are you complete? If you are rich and you are sick, are you complete? God says, I will make you complete so you can do my will. Are you seeing that now? Make you complete so you can do his will. So when your, your, when your mindset is that God says, I will complete you. I will give you money. I will give you marriage. I will give you child. Do my will. There is nothing that God can withhold from a Christian whose desire is to fulfill the will of God. There is nothing. There is nothing. So stop checking your prayer point. Are your motives right? Sometimes eh, it seems as if God is unfair. God is not unfair. Is that some people have found themselves in the will of God and they have attracted his blessings automatically. What you struggle to have, they don't struggle to have it. Sometimes when I sit back and I look at the things the Lord has done in this church, <laughs> I just know that uh, we must be in the will of God. It is impossible to do what we do and be where we are in this kind of season without being in his will. Are you following me, child of God? Number four, it is the fulfillment of the will of God that brings God pleasure. Is the fulfillment of the will of God on earth that brings God pleasure in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 9. That kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it is the fulfillment of the will of God on earth that gives God pleasure in heaven. When God looks down at your life, can I talk to you now? It's not because you sit down. It's not because you have a car that God is happy. But if it is his will, when you have a car, what 
makes God rejoice is not your car, is that his will has been fulfilled. Are you seeing why God hates sickness? Someone say, I cannot be sick. <laughs> because the will of God is that you should be healed. Christ died for you to be healed. So when you are sick, God does not have pleasure. Are you seeing why God hates? Do you know that God hates poverty? Let me see if you know God hates poverty. Some people stand that down. Okay, I now know you enemies of riches. Look at this. Now, this is where you have the understanding of what, of where to react and become spiritually violent against every work of the devil when you realize that what is happening is not in the will of god you react and become violent because it is not his will <laughs> yesterday god was speaking to me the lord said to me he said he said why is it that we pray for people to be saved and we think it is easy but we think it is hard for them to be healed. Let me explain. The faith that they need to be safe is the same faith they need to be healed. For example, someone will come in church today. He has been smoking, living. Don't come and he come and say, "Lord Jesus, enter my heart." They will tell the person he is saved and he is saved. Somebody come and say he has cancer. You say he is healed. Why do you think he is not healed? Our mind has been corrupted. Ah, in this church, I prophesy, you shall never be sick. Any sickness that enters in your body will come out by fire. Amen. Somebody say, I cannot be sick. I cannot be poor. I cannot be cursed. I cannot be afflicted. Shut it. Sit down. Wait, 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 wait. Please, who is saved here? Who is saved? Put your hand down. Did you pay to be saved? Did you fast to be saved? Why do you think you are not? Why do you think you need to pay to be healed at that back car? What did you do to be safe? It is the same thing you need to do to be healed. What did I do to be safe? I believe and I confess. What do I do to be healed? I believe and I confess. Open your hand, let me prophesy. Any sickness in your blood, in your flesh, in your organs, in your bone, I prophesy. I will say disappear and never return. See that the Bible says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus that though he was rich for our sake, he became poor, that us through his poverty might become rich. So, rich prosperity is the will of God. You are not doing God a favor by being poor, you are not doing a favor to the kingdom of God by being poor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't be deceived and don't deceive yourself. Poverty does not please God. In fact, poverty is not purity. There are many witches that, that, that in fact, some poor people are witches. I'm not saying all, I say some. Not every poor man is innocent though. Because the Bible says help the poor. There are some poor people you will help. <laughs> As you help them, they swallow you. Some say I cannot be poor. I'm not hearing your prayer. Say I cannot be poor. Shout it louder. Open your hand. Let me bless you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is the will of God that you should be rich. By the grace of God, prosper. Amen. I say prosper. Amen. Sit down. Now, are you seeing something now? So the Bible says, God has pleasure when his will is what? Done. Now, but look at me. His will cannot be done until you are transformed. Some say I must be transformed. Are you following me now? This makes you understand. Listen to me. Never derive your identity from your condition, from your background or your experience. Never. You are not a failure because you have been failing. The only thing that describes who you are is the word of God. And God says you are more than a conqueror. Someone said that's who I am. Are you with me, child of God? So look at this child of God. So you must be transformed. <laughs> so I explained to you last week about that you need the mirror. Not so? 
which is what? The word of God. You need to look at the word of God. But now, what do you do with the mirror? Is what I want to show you now. It now says, be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Of your mind. Not of your marriage. Not of your church. Of your mind. So your major problem now is not your marriage. It's your mind. As a man thinking. So easy. So we see therefore that the only possibility to engage a change in your life is to activate a change in your mind. Your praises be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want you to understand and listen to me very well that what has kept your life the way it is is not Satan, it's your mind. You must break out from this mind. <laughs> you see, I'm, you see, I'm, I saw a mountain and day. I know some mountain, they will sack me for the work. When a person in mind, they, 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 corrupted mind. See, I see they look me. He hates me. Now what do you say hate you? It is your mind. It's just I, I, it look me now so. So see they vex me, they crush me inside your mind now so. I saw my life day. No man like me for this family. You did lie. Now you no like yourself. All man like you. But because you hate, listen to me, you will see life through the color of your eyeglass. My brother come with it. I like your eyeglass. Give me. <laughs> you see this eyeglass? <laughs> with this eyeglass, if you wear a white shirt, you, your shirt will have dark shit on it. It's not because your shirt is white. It's because his eyeglass is dark. If you wear red, the shirt will be red. So you will all see life through the color of your eyeglass. And your eyeglass is your mind. And be it transformed by the renewing of your weighty. So your problem is your mind. So the Bible says therefore that for you to be transformed, to be changed into something else, you must engage it by changing your mindset. Do you understand me? Don't focus on your marriage. Don't focus on your business. If you are poor, poverty is a physical symptom that foolishness is oppressing your mind. No vex. No vex. Not true. Not true. He says, you give us wisdom to make wealth. Money na wisdom, not be connection. Now sense for business. You don't get the sense all in the faith. The mind. As a man thinketh. So easy. So you must become conscious of your mind. Whatever Allah Barashiga, what is your mind? <laughs> the mind is the seat of thoughts, imaginations, and emotions. The mind is the seat of thoughts, imaginations, sorry, emotions, and consciousness. The mind is the seat of thoughts, imagination, emotions, and consciousness. Your thoughts your imaginations your emotions and your consciousness are in your mind so God is saying that the reason why your life is the way it is is because your mind is the way it is so God is giving us a mission God says engage and change your mind I have come to realize that the most one of the greatest things we do as Christians is to neglect our mind listen to me life is non jumbo or is it I call that thing? foot. Just go and write any number. Some people, some those who play pari foot say, look at me. Christ, Christians don't play pari foot. It's a shame. It means you are lazy. It is wrong. Don't play pari foot or gambling. It is not for those who are born in Zion. It is not for us. Don't do that ever, ever again. Since you have been doing, what have you gained even? What am I been talking? <laughs> Even if you have gained something, it is wrong. Don't do it. Amen. <laughs> so, people neglect their mind. They just feel they just come like this and just say, Oh Lord, thank you. you as you just marry, Prophet Kevin will now pray for you. Your marriage will just be nice. <laughs> see, see, I see you. you. You have overwatched African magic. You don't confuse your head. Prophet Kevin's prayer has no impact on your life if it has not if his teaching has not have impact on your mind your marriage would be according to your mind so you want to get married you focus on 
how I go when I black, you go when I white, my dressmen, my groomsmen, and you are not reading books to affect your mind. When you marry, you start suffering. It was not the devil. It's because you prepared for marriage and didn't pre you prepare for wedding. Did not prepare for marriage. Ma it is the mind. You want to do business. Do you mind your mind? Don't think you can just take anointing oil and go to your store. Power, favor. God the prophet came in prosper my business. And your mind is dull. Your mind is stupid. You will not prosper. Your mind as a man think. Not as a man anoint. As the man think. So the anointing has expression in your life according to the capacity of your mind. The more your mind increases, the more anointing the flow. Number one, your mind is the gateway into your life. Proverbs 23 verse 7. As a man thinks, so is he. As a man, as a man, as a man, not as a man prays. As a man thinks. Ephesians 3.20 God is able to do exceedingly above what we may ask or think. So number one, your mind is the gateway into your life. Anything that enters your life passes through your mind. Listen to me very well. Oh. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of your heart proceeds the issues of your life. The issues of your life don't come out from a shrine. You must choose what you believe today. Either you believe in poverty or you believe in riches. You believe you can be sick or you believe in Christ you are healthy. Choose what you believe because your life will be conditioned by your mind. Whatever controls your mind will control your life. mind is the gateway to your life as a man thinketh, so is he show me Romans chapter 8 verse 5 to 6 let me show you something there for those who live according to the flesh set their set their mind on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit set their mind on the things of the spirit look at that very well it means number two the way you live is determined by the way you think. Those who live after the flesh is because their mind is on things of the flesh. Listen to me. There is no prayer I can pray for you to be delivered from fornication if you have not conquered the spirit of lust in your mind. It does not start on the bed. It starts in your head. Are you following me now? So the scripture makes us understand that the way you live is determined by the way you think and thinking is of the mind. So for those who live after the flesh, why? Because they set their mind on the things of the flesh. It means if I set my mind on the things of the spirit, prosperity, I will prosper. If I set my mind on the things of the spirit, freedom i will be free whatever you are seeing in your life today is a function of what you have been thinking in your mind number three your mind is the battleground for spiritual warfare second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 it says the god of this world has blinded their mind so the devil attacks what your mind so Corinthians 10 verse 4 says the weapons of warfare are not carnal but they are mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds making every imagination every thought captive so your mind Romans 1st 2nd Corinthians 4 verse 4 and 2nd Corinthians 10 verse 4 your mind is the battleground for spiritual warfare 10 verse 4 2nd Corinthians 4 verse 4 and 10 verse 4 put both of them can I talk to you? Most of us think when we say <laughs> spiritual warfare, in your, in, what you think is that you will not <laughs> you will not be in a place you will have a sword. Satan will have a sword. You begin to fight. Bang! Now it's a 
spiritual warfare is in your mind when an idea comes to you to lie and you say i don't want to lie warfare has begun it is a fight are you seeing the fight when demons possess a man they take hold of his mind because whatever controls your mind will control your life in mark chapter 5 verse 1 to 15 he said there was a man who was mad and had many demons when show me verse 15 he said when jesus prayed for him he was in his right mind so when you are demon possessed you are not in your right mind then they came to jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right look at that please focus on what i'm teaching now you will never be rich if you don't start thinking it you will never be healed if you don't start thinking it because when you think it you create the spiritual possibility for it to happen on earth listen to me the possibilities you create for your destiny are the function of the imaginations of your mind when you sit down thinking i want to see my mommy die when i start keep money my mommy will die some more time and now you don't make them huh. what i go do if my man die why are you thinking such things by those thoughts you are making the possibility to happen job said the things i feared ah so by his fear he created the possibility for it to happen i want to say i get an accident hey god forbid oh keep thinking it it will soon happen prayer cannot help what you have created in the spirit by your imagination listen to me very well oh. when you imagine things you give them spiritual substance and the more you imagine them one day it will enter your physical life stop sitting and thinking i want to see her die i need to die now if i die for your dream now your dream you too you can't die for my own dream <laughs> need a matter of balance <laughs> If I seek for your dream, then I dream. For my dream, to, I go dream today, you go seek. Any man dream, dream yourself, man. Why you dream me? Dream yourself, I dream myself. <laughs> See, I cannot be sick. I cannot be poor. I will not walk in sin. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying that? So that you can stop thinking it. Are you following me now? So the possibilities you create in your destiny are a function of the imaginations of your mind. Whether they are as a man think it so easy have you learned something there now have you learned something there so what possibilities are you creating with your mind so bible says if you want to be transformed renew your mind stop thinking the way you think you just sit down see my see as my own life day no good thing ever happened for me i don't know why people they hate me so I don't know where my life not in your work I find. Another another job since morning. <laughs> See I'm now. I saw go and I saw charge my phone so never cut light. My own thing them bad. No be your thing them bad. Your mind bad. Start thinking well. I am blessed. I am favored. Now there are three kinds of mind. Number one, a corrupted mind. Second Timothy. 3 verse 8 he said there are people whose mind has been corrupted a corrupted mind is a one in which sin and unbelief reigns that's a corrupted mind number one someone say corrupted mind <laughs> second timothy 3 verse 8 he said whose minds have been corrupted so your mind can be corrupted and your mind is corrupted by sin when you sit down and you constantly think of immorality your mind is corrupted you constantly think of bad bad things <laughs> have you ever walked on the road eh? and you see people who are building you say i want to see that man for you need, you need prayer <laughs> now bad mind that i used to get that kind of thing before i said i want to see that man for if the man for you no go die but you think and you drop us so or some small bikini place so you know say i want to see you for knock your head <laughs> that is a corrupted mind 
in a corrupted mind there is sin there is unbelief there is bitterness they are bitter they constantly think evil so a corrupted mind is a mind where sin unbelief bitterness and evil dwells always thinking evil how can you be a husband you are at your workplace you are planning when i go and say i will show that woman something i am my brother now wait till my enter my, my. you are planted where i go show you something as you enter the house because your mind is prepared for evil even if your wife say good morning daddy you will hear that you fool daddy say you call me fool no i say good morning you say fool i said i talk you they argue pa now because you don't prepare your mind for fight it's an evil mind amen the second kind of mind is a double mind james chapter 1 verse 8 and james 4 verse 8 a double mind is a mind where doubt fear and worry dwells in a double mind is a mind where doubt fear and worry dwells in so somebody who has a double mind is always doubting you are healed amen after two weeks i'm not sure i'm healed double mind and Bible says, if you have a double mind, you cannot receive from God. Because your mind is always today. You yeah, believe. I am more than a millionaire. I am tomorrow. I am a poor sinner. Please, who are you at the end? Tell us, let us know. A double mind. Some days you wake up, you feel like you are so blessed. Some days you wake up, you say, Kai, my life now only balok. A double mind. Today they are happy. Tomorrow they are sad. Today they can't church. Tomorrow they are not. Why not can't church? I was not feeling good in my heart. You just woke up one time and say, my heart don't just spoil. Your heart not just been. Why, why your heart is spoiled? That's a double mind. I prophesy. You hear them go say, amen. This month, amen. You will see prosperity. Amen. 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 They will believe for as they come over church so. They turn like so. Why? Only suffer, they suffer. I just said now, you said amen. Double mind. So they are unstable in their work with God. Today they are hot. Tomorrow they are cold. Today they believe. Tomorrow they don't believe. Tomorrow they are. I I rebuked a double mind. Amen. It's a mind of doubt. If you are always worried, it means you have a double mind. There are people who worry for a living. In fact, on their article, should be written profession, worrying. Don't go say, eh? I never worry today. They worry that they have not worried. I never worry today. My worry. <laughs> now, what did you do? You? I don't know, eh? I don't know. Why is this so? I don't know. My heart is joke. No, wait. I don't know. I never worry today since morning. I don't know. I never worry. The dead mind, which is the best mind, is a sound mind. Somebody like a sound mind. <laughs> Second Timothy 1 verse 7. He said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. A sound mind is the mind of Christ where love dwells in. This is a sound mind. Are you following me now? This is the mind you need to have. If you don't have a sound mind, you cannot have a sound life. Stop thinking failure. Say, I'm a success. I am great. <laughs> Some people, they talk the shame. They, they don't believe that I'm a success. The shame, because say, me. You know, you are, your mind has still been programmed to think that you are a failure. If you say, I am rich, say, hey, I'm rich. Jesus, I'm, come on, it is normal. When you know who you are and you begin to talk, people think you are bragging. Ah, it is not. So a sound mind is what? The mind of Christ where love, power, dwells in. This is the only mind that the Holy Spirit can use. Only a sound mind is conducive 
for the expression of the life of God on earth. Bible says, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. I am blessed. Eh, hey, why are you saying amen? I'm not asking, I'm not asking you amen. Talk your talk, I talk my talk. Any man talk your talk. I am favored. Don't steal my own. Talk your own. Listen. Can I talk? Somebody wakes up in the morning and he's hungry. Two people are hungry. One is thinking where he can beg. Another one is thinking what he can do. Begging is a mindset. Poverty is a mindset. So, two people wake up hungry. One was saying, now wait if you walk away, if they give you money, if you chop it. Another one say, no, what if you beg it? He said, go for your phone. Tap, hey, bros, how? Man, so when I saw the true, man. Hmm, now what for you? I beg, no more me now. That's very poor. Don't live like that. Even if you have to beg, it should be the last. Wake up in the morning. I am hungry. What can I do? You think you leave your house, you begin to walk around. I say, have you seen when I backside when I give me 500? It is better to walk and take money. I'm telling you this thing. There is dignity in labor. But my point is this. When you have this mind of Christ, a sound mind, it's an excellent mind where wisdom dwells. Wisdom of God. Look, show me a woman with a sound mind. You see her marriage, you know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you the truth. You, you, you see the way this thing cannot be gotten in school. Now only God, the game. Have a sound mind. Listen to this, I know something. From the time you were born to now, the major assignment of Satan was to corrupt your mind. <laughs> if you grew up in a family where they have been telling you you are good for nothing, it has programmed your mind to be useless. You will never think you can succeed in life. That is why when God brings you to church, he wants us to change the way you think. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Eh, this man say I'm nothing. Mm -mm. What did God say? When you accept the opinions of men as reality, you become limited by the arm of the flesh. Don't accept it. I am more than that. Listen to me. You can be in error. You are smoking, you are drinking, you are fornicating. And people look and say, you fake man, wicked man. But in your heart, you know that you don't like that life. They can insult you, but you are saying, I know this is not who I am. I can change. You will change. You will change. There will be no change if your mind, so your transformation, whatever you are transformed into, is a function of what you are thinking in your mind. Please focus on your mind. Take time and work on your mind. Expose your mind. Because your mind has two gateways. Number one is your ear. The first gate of your mind is your ear. If something must enter your mind, number one, it enters through your ear. That's what Jesus said in Mark chapter 4. I believe there's um, Twenty-four. He said, "Be careful of what you hear. Hey, you are foolish. You are good for nothing. Useless woman. Useless. Listen to me. <laughs> Can I talk to you? Listen to me. All when I hear me fine. If you like your life, never stay in a place where you are constantly insulted. Listen to me very well. Even if it's a relationship, you better leave." Don't manage it. It will damage you. If you need to succeed, you need to be in a place where your mind is not being corrupted by words of anger and bitterness. That is why as a parent, you must be careful the way you talk to your child. Balok picking. Don't talk like that. When you do that, you are programming the mind of the child into what you are saying. And the child will be transformed to what you said. So the first gateway of your mind is your ear. 
the things you hear the things you hear what are you hearing mark 4 24 jesus said be careful of what you hear be careful of what you hear be careful of what you hear the things you hear you begin to be afraid how does fear come fear comes by hearing evil news you say, hey this is happened no the second gate of your mind is your eye is what your eyes Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12 God said Jeremiah what do you see what you see is what you will think do you know that what you see is what you think <laughs> that is why I said you must put the mirror listen to me <laughs> you want to succeed you want to succeed number one look for people who have succeeded and surround your life with their materials that's number one thing if you want to succeed in business have an image of a successful person in your mind many people end up failing like their father if their father failed when your father has failed you need the image of another person to succeed if not you will end up like your father so you work on your mind surround yourself what are you looking at <laughs> you think you can be in kumba selling your mangora you become a millionaire yes if and only while you are in Kumba, your mind should be somewhere else. Your body can be in Kosala, but your mind is in America. You, you can travel in your mind and see things which are better than where your present life is. And one day, you will change your present situation to look like what you saw in your mind when you travel in the spirit. Have an image of good things in your spirit. What you see is what you think. What you hear. So in spite the failure you see in your mind, Look for a success. Are you a musician? You must have the image of a successful musician which you keep looking at. And when you look at him, you want to become like him. Remember the law of the mirror. You become what you behold. What are you, what are you looking at? <laughs> Please stop. Everybody should not be your friend. No way you are going to in life. Everyone cannot be your mentor. Everyone cannot teach you what you hear, what you see. And the third gateway into your mind is your mouth. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. It means what you say enters your mind. So if you say, I am good for nothing, it enters and it programs your mind to be good for nothing. Sit down, sit down. Please, don't talk anyhow. Now, so my own thing in the day. Nothing. No, no talk so. My thing will go day fine. My thing will go day fine. All things will day fine. My life will go day fine. All things will stand. No matter what it happen now, God will bless me. This is the possibility mindset. Why? Because your eye, your ear, your mouth determines what happens. These are the only three doors into your mind. Anything that enters your mind must enter through your ear, your eye, or your mouth. Maybe you said it yourself, or somebody said it and you heard it, or you watched it. So with this now, I want to ask you therefore how do you renew your mind simple simple meditation on the scripture that's all I'm done with the message that's it that this is the key this is the key let's see Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 to 9 this is the key dear people of God this is the key oh glory be to God glory be to the Lord <laughs> only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all all the law which Moses my servant commanded you to, turn, to not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go verse 8, everybody read the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, not from your heart from your mouth, but you shall you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have and it's in that he said joshua you want to succeed begin to talk bible listen to bible watch bible talk it listen to it you renew your mind by meditating on the word of god it is speaking it don't say i don't finish 
say God will turn things around for my good. When things are tight, then we say, hey, I don't finish. No, God will turn it around. That is what the word of God says. You must train your mind to address every issue of your life according to scripture. Not according to the way you feel. You can feel pain, but you see, it is well with me. Because as a man thinking, so you see, listen, I can't heal the sick if my mind does not see them healed. You must be seeing it. Stop seeing yourself failing. Stop seeing yourself being poor. Listen to me. I'm talking, I may look funny. Wait till the time comes. You will see it with your eye. Because my mind sees the possibility. So what do I do? I begin to program my mind. Every day I'm telling myself, Kevin, you are the head and not the tail. You are the top. You are more than a conqueror. This is how I talk all the time. You listen to me. Hey, yeah, Malia Kada. Give me Psalms 1, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, being a katabaya, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season. What whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does. Have you seen it? Why? Because in his mouth you never hear, I am poor, I am rich, I am blessed, I am prosperous, I am more than a conqueror. As it's not a... At the go store, what well, I will say today, self so hmm, the waiting around tight for Kumba. Not talk so, no talk so. If he eating tight for all man, you know if he tight for me. He said the light shineth in darkness, and darkness has not understood. So when people say there is darkness, we see light. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, God commanded light to shine out of darkness. So meditation on the word of God is programming your heart to think like God. Now they think that. This is how you program your heart. It doesn't matter the intensity of what you feel. Say what God says. So, meditation is what? Programming your mind to think like God. Let's see Philippians 4 verse 8. NIV. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is loving, whatever is admirable, anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about is accident good? Should you think about it? Is death good? Is poverty good? Is sickness good? So even when you have a medical report that you are sick, what should you be thinking? I am healed. I will be healed. One day I will testify. This should be your mindset meditation is programming your mind with the word of God to think like God program your mind I can't die every day I confess I will not die I will live to declare the goodness of God don't you see that say I'm married. Man, your marriage will not break your marriage broke because you thought it would break now it has happened the things I feared have happened. If you fear poverty, you will be poor. If you fear sickness, you will be sick. It is a law of attraction. The things I feared have happened. Program your mind. I am rich. I am... Oh, Calabas. Kindabaya. You go on internet, you are always chatting. Where you can go on internet and read books that will change your mind. Read books on business. Study things that will make you think different. Listen to me. You see this kumba? Kumba na trap. If you think like a kumba man, you will end up the most poor man on earth. Kumba is a, a backward city. I'm, 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 this is not because not true. Backward in everything. Very. If you leave Kumba, go to another city, you come back here, you'll be shocked that it's like you have left America and come. It is backward. So the only way to survive here is that our body should be here, but our mind should be see, somewhere else. So you should be reading books. The only way we will change this city is if our mind can travel to different civilizations, we will bring it here. We should think better. Call box is not the only business. Only my one ride bike. But now because I'm not Kumba, is it Kumba? I need a bike. Papa, don't be my bike. Can't bless him. His bike, the only... He, so, in Kumba, every young man, the only possibility they see for business, if it's not cocoa, is bike. Another business day, 
And this girl, if you know be headers and a teller, they get headers and teller and nurse. All man and nurse on a teller on a headers. There's no other beast apart from that. You see, because our mind is so is is it has restrained by the town. But if you expose your mind, you will have different ideas. Coco is not the only business. I tell you the truth. If you don't expose your mind to a better reality, your present reality will kill your life. It can be better. Think much more. It's not only hairdressing. Expose your mind. Read books. Think. Read books and think. Read books and think. Read books and think. Who has a phone? <laughs> Listen. This is the most powerful thing on earth now. Because I, 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 you have not gone to Harvard University. But every course they teach in that university, you can read it on, on your phone. It is free. The only difference is that the man who went to school will have certificate. But the truth is this: certificate may give job, but does not keep you there. Because if they employ you and you cannot do what we employ, they will sack you. That is why people who have not gone to school are employing those who went to school. Because those who have not gone to school, they have idea. Those who went to school have certificate. So it's not about having certificate; it's about having idea. Expose your mind. Attend conference. Talk to people that are better. Don't be you. You. All, look, all, look, at you, look at your squat. <laughs> all I get one, one room has. Do you want the ride bike? Do you want the sell tomato? Do you want the sell onion? See your squat. Have you not? The Bible says, they that walk with a fool shall be foolish. Proverbs 13 20. The companions of fools will be a fool, but he that walk with the wise shall be wise. If you are in a place and there are four foolish men, you do not count well, there are five. You are the number five. Same thing, if you are in a place and there are four wise men, you are the fifth wise man. What is your environment? Expose your mind to the wisdom of God. Think better. And this goes to those watching me from any city where you are. Don't allow yourself to be limited by your environment. Because though your body can be in an environment, your mind can travel. Listen to me. If you know the way I study, not only Bible, I read books. I watch tapes. I'm, re I'm watching the videos of Christian businessmen who are billionaires. I, I want to know better. I have, I have books where I study on leadership. How do you manage people as a pastor? How do you crisis management? How do you communicate? I have studied those things because to stand here is not only anointing I need wisdom to manage you people I don't know if you are listening to me so meditation will open your mind so the first thing is to meditate on the word of God and also on good materials they, they are good materials it's not only but they are good materials but I will just limit myself <coughs> to the Bible are you with me? <laughs> expose your mind Listen to teachings on prosperity. You see how you start thinking prosperity, ideas will come. Listen, expose your mind. You have a phone, you have a TV. Look for channels that show things that would help you grow, not things that you watch and say, Ah, but six no day. It, movie does not help you. Yes, it, there is time for, I, I agree, there is time for entertainment. I agree with that, but listen to me. Spend much of your time programming your mind because the future you want tomorrow is dependent on the programming you give your mind today. The future is not bright, the future is blank. What you write today is what you will read tomorrow. Show me the Deuteronomy 11, verse 20, verse 18 to 21. We'll just end there. Therefore, read, you shall lay. These words of mine in your in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as a frontless on your eye. He said, buy a wristband. A sign on your hand, a wristband that. You shall teach them to your children. Speaking of them when you sit in your house. Yeah. He said, talk Bible when you sit. When you walk, talk Bible. When you lie down, talk Bible. When you rise up. So, when you are sitting, I am a success. When you lie down, I am a success. When you are walking, I am the head. He said, keep saying it. 
you shall write them on the doorposts of your house. Is that not sika? They say put sika. Anytime you see sika, read it. I am more than a conqueror and enter your house. And on your gates, 21. And yeah, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your father to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth. When you program your heart, he said you will see heaven on earth. Psalms 119 verse 11, David said, your word have I hidden in my heart so I may not sin. When you program your mind with the word of God, Satan cannot control you to sin. <laughs> you want to succeed? Look for successful people. Follow them. Follow them. Please, choose your friends. Don't allow your friends to choose you. Choose your company. And before you choose your company, check righteousness. Check prosperity. Check success. Don't be emotional with your life. Somebody who is a failure will one day contaminate you with that disease. It is the truth. It's not, I'm not being hard. I'm being truthful. Program your life. Program your mind. <laughs> you want to have a good marriage? Won't you read books on marriage? You program your mind to be a good wife. It's not that we say, I shall be a good wife. What do I mean by I shall be a good wife? You must have the wisdom. By wisdom, a house is built. So we, you read books, you say, okay, as a wife, but your husband talk, don't talk back. You program your mind. When a time will come, you will do it. It's not a confession, it's a programming. Program your mind. Up, listen, up till now, listen, I have read more than 100 books on marriage. Now. I did make sure every month I read like two, five. Because I want to be a good husband. It's not a prayer point. I program my mind. I read. This is how you treat your wife. I say, ah, maybe not the one. And listen, you'll be shocked. Maybe you think you know. You know nothing at all. I'm telling you, I thought I knew. I don't know 1%. The more you read, the more you understand you were dull in the past. Paul said when I was a child, I spoke like a child. But Paul thought he was smart in that time. You want to be rich? You want to be healthy? You want to be righteous? Transform your mind. Gather the information of what you want to become. Begin to put it in your mind. Read books. If you want to be a billionaire, read at least 100 books written by billionaires because they are your colleagues and your brothers. Train yourself now. Start reading their books. This man is a billionaire. How did he do? Meet rich people in town and say, sir, I know you have money. When you meet a rich man, don't ask for money. Ask for, ask for wisdom. It is when you meet a rich man. I say, people don't know anything. When you meet up rich man, no ask him money. Pays him give sense. Because where he is, it is sense that puts him there. Rich men have much to offer. Listen to me. Not all wealth is stored in the bank. Some wealth is stored in people's mind. Wealth is stored in bank, in mind, and in books. If you don't have money in a bank, there is wealth in a book. If you read books, you have people's wisdom. For example, now, if I write a book on prophecy, it takes me 10 years for Noam. I write the book for five minutes, you go not to announce for 10 years. So my, my wealth of prophecy can be entered enter the book. If you meet me and say, and Prophet Kevin, I want to know how can you do for church to grow? I will tell you. I will tell you. When you meet great men, don't just ask for prayer. Don't just ask for money. Much more. Ask for counsel. Sir, can you talk to me? How did you do for your business to live from? 50,000 to 5 million. How did you do? Like, how did you do? Because you went, how did you do? I, I like to ask these questions. One time I was speaking to one man who was one of our members. He was telling us how he was a motoboy. And I said, but how did you move from being a motoboy on camion to having so much money? I want to know. Me, me I not be motoboy. Wait, me say, I get better advantage past yourself. I said, but I, I, said, I, I said, tell me, you'll be motoboy for camion. And now you have this kind of money, houses land everywhere. I say, please say, tell me, you not tell you it did like that. Listen to me. That your uncle. Stop. Go to my say, uncle, I want to know how you do. Na nyongo man run over. say, okay, come for midnight. I don't tell you, come back. Run. Run. But hear me. It is poverty. That makes people call every rich man younger man. Now my hand no clean. And I said, okay, now we are clean. When you are a lazy pastor, every 
man of God who has become great in God is, is not real. He's using occultic power. Same thing when you are a lazy person. Any my children come. Don't be like that man. No, hmm, his, his money is not clean. You don't make a picking and all hate all my way now because of your poverty. Because you don't know how to tell your children why you are poor. <laughs> so you don't begin to say, come. Don't mind eh? Don't mind all these people. They are bad people. Nyongo. Your child begins to grow and he starts thinking that people that have money is nyongo. Two things. Either you remain poor or you will enter nyongo to have money. Tell your child, though I didn't have money, you can have it. You can succeed. You can be great. You can be better than me. Can't you get ideas? Listen, if you meet a person that talks to you wisdom, hold on to them. Your mistake now say, with the vexed they don't give you money, leave money. Man will teach you how to catch fish. Pass my way, give you fish. Stand up. <laughs>